Is Russia invading Ukraine? Is World War III happening? <laughs> well, according, according to the West, it is, right? So let me show you what Liz Truss said. Liz Truss is the, the uh, foreign secretary, the, the British foreign secretary. So she's insisting, right? She's insisting that Russia is going to invade. Uh, here she's saying that Russia is, is failing to live up to the international commitments it's made around transparency and it's refusing to engage with the OSCE. And then... Here she's saying that the Russian invasion is imminent, right? She says that the Russian invasion of Ukraine is imminent. She's warning us, okay? And here, look at the Washington Post. They say Russian government hackers have likely penetrated critical Ukrainian computer systems, according to the United States, right? So they're talking about a few banks and uh, even the defense ministry, I take it, right? So uh, here we go. Russian government hackers have likely broadly penetrated Ukrainian military energy and other critical computer networks. This is just from a few hours ago. Here, this is from the New York Times. As Russia announces pullback, Biden warns that the Ukrainian invasion is still possible. Do you, do you want to see even more hysterical, uh, even more hysterical ones? I'm going to show you even more hysterical uh, headlines. Look at this one. This is from Politico. Putin could attack Ukraine on February 16th. <laughs> So we have a date. We, we even have a date, according to, to the White House, right? According to, to Biden. And look at The Sun. You guys know The Sun, right? The Sun is a British paper. Uh, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's gutter journalism, <laughs> honestly. Look at what The Sun says. They don't only say February 16th. They say at 1 a.m. They even have the time, right? Putin is so stupid, apparently, that he even... He, he not only gives out the date, but he gives out the time. And who... To, to whom? The sun. Like, out, out of all the papers, it's the sun. Well, guess what? Let's look at what time it is. Let's look at what time it is. What time is it in Ukraine? It's three, it's half past three in the morning on February the 16th. And no, there has been no Russian invasion. Oh, what a shame. What a shame, right? All, all of that, all of that warmongering for nothing. Why would they ever do that? Why would they lie to us? They wouldn't do such a thing. It's, it's not like, you know, Western governments have a propensity and, and uh, an inherent urge to lie and manufacture one crisis after the other. They would never lie to us. What's going on? What's going on? Well, it turns out, it turns out that Russia is pulling back troops, not invading. So this is from The Guardian from today. Say Russia confirms partial withdrawal of troops from Ukrainian border. OK, so they're, they're not invading Ukraine. They're actually de-escalating. Here's something else. Russia's defense minister is in Syria because, you know, wh whenever you're about to invade a country and start a war, you send your defense minister, you know, to, to, <laughs> to the wrong place. That's what every country does, right? Whenever you're about to invade, you just send your defense minister off to Syria to see <laughs> President Assad. <laughs> this is today, right? This is today. So today we're supposed to have an invasion. Right now, apparently, Russia is supposed to be invading Ukraine. And yet Russian troops are leaving Russia's border with Ukraine. The, defense, the Russian defense minister is in Syria. It sounds like a pretty shitty invasion, right? <laughs> Here's the best part. Are you ready for this? This is from the... The AFP, they say that breaking the Ukraine, so Ukraine and the West have managed to prevent a Russian escalation. Oh, I see how it is now. I get it. Okay, so apparently, apparently there was going to be an invasion, but it's thanks to Ukraine and the West that there isn't one. I get it. So no matter what happens, the West is always correct, Ukraine is always correct, and Russia is always at fault. I get it. I, I'm starting to understand now. Stupid me. How, how could I miss this? How could I miss this, guys? Let me show you something else that is so ridiculous, and this was posted on February 11th, right? Take a look at this tweet. It says, Putin has big weekend plans in Ukraine. Number one, he's going to cut power and heat. He's going to knock out the Ukrainian Navy and Air Force. He's going to kill general staff and hit them with a cyber attack. Then he's going to install pro-Russian president, and then he's going to resort to a full-scale military invasion if Ukraine doesn't give in. Holy shit. That's, that's, a, that's a laundry list of things to do. Wow. I wonder if that came true. Let's see. Did, did Putin do any of these things? Nope. And then the same person says, oh, well, 
you know, emotions were running high and I let them get the better of me. <laughs> no, that's not, that's not emotions running high. You just made up like the wildest fucking accusation. What, what is that? She, like, it's so detailed as well. Like he's going to have Fruity Loops cornflakes and he's going to put on green pants and he's going to cut the power in Ukraine and kill the general staff. <laughs> what the fuck? That's not emotions running high. You're just a professional bullshitter. And of course, I don't need to tell you, you won't be surprised. This is someone who's affiliated with the Atlantic Council. Need I say more? Need I say more? Jesus Christ. I mean, these, these people are really something. They are really something. Here's the head of NATO. Look at what he's, he's saying today. Okay. So he, he, this is, again, just a few hours ago. He's saying everything is now in place for a new attack. So, you know, all the evidence points to the, the Russia saying we're not going to invade. Russia is not invading. They're pulling back troops from the border, from, from Russia's border with Ukraine. And the West is just, they can't accept it, right? They have to keep going. Take a look at this. But Russia still has time to step back from the brink, stop preparing for war, and start working for a peaceful solution. Everything is now in place for a new attack. But Russia still has time to step back from the... I mean, I, I just, I don't know what to say. I, I really don't know what to say. Like, I, <laughs> can you imagine being on the, like, on the Russian side? This is infuriating. Honestly, it, it's so disgusting how they, they just keep lying. They can't stop lying. No matter what happens. Like, even, even when Russia is pulling back troops, they're like, well, they didn't pull them all back. What? <laughs> yeah, but you, you said there'd be a fucking invasion two hours ago. Where is it? Where's the invasion? I'm waiting, man. Actually, not two hours ago. Three hours ago. I don't know the Russians to be late. I, I, I don't know the Russians to be late. And, you know, what's crazy is that these, uh, these people who keep going on about, uh, about Putin, right? Like the, the, this, this Atlantic Council uh, uh, individual, which I showed you just now. Is that they keep going. They, they don't stop. You know? It's like even when they're wrong, they still think that they're right. And um, let me show you something over here. I just want to pull up this tweet. It's so ridiculous. Again, it's the same person, right? Hold on a second. Look at this. <laughs> it just, the bullshit never stops. Look at this. We've been so focused on Russian troops and tanks that we missed Moscow's strategy. Strangle Ukraine's economy and sap the resolve of its people. Jesus Christ. They, they can't stop. Like, it, what the fuck is wrong with you? Like, even when there's no invasion, they're like, oh, you see, we, we, thank, we are the ones who stopped the invasion. We did that. Right? Because there was going to be one. I swear to God. You trust, trust me, bro. And then they say, well, no, the real invasion is in our minds, actually. Putin is invading. <laughs> He's invading our minds. And if you want to talk about the Ukrainian economy, I mean, the, the Ukrainians themselves, the, the government, the Ukrainian government have, have said to the West, you need to chill the fuck out because, you know, your fear mongering and hysteria saying that there's going to be a war any second is actually ruining our economy. So it, Russia has... has that's not Russia's fault. That's the West's fault. The, Russia has been saying there's no invasion coming. There's just no invasion. Even the Ukrainians are saying that the West is overhyping this and they need to chill because it's having negative repercussions on the economy. And to the point that, you know, you're seeing now chatter in the media where they're saying that the president Zelensky, you know, maybe he's not the right man for the job. And let me translate what that means to you. Let me explain what that means from, from politics to English. What that means is... Zelensky is not doing as he's told, right? He's not being a good puppet. He's not being a good enough puppet. And so he's got to go. Because when you're saying that, well, you know, there's not really that big of a risk that Russia is going to invade our country, Ukraine, then that doesn't fit the NATO narrative, right? That doesn't fit the US narrative, the UK narrative, the NATO narrative. And so you got to go, right? And I wouldn't be surprised if they got rid of him. That's, but again... The, the main point here is that do you see again how they manufacture these crises and then when it doesn't happen, because you can tell from a mile away it's not going to happen, they're acting like, well, that's thanks to us. We averted it. No, you didn't. You didn't really do anything. Uh, if anything, it made things worse because um, instead of engaging in diplomacy, what did the U.S. and the U.K. do? They went and sent weapons to Ukraine, right? And this is all because of a failure to address Russia's concerns. 
let me let me say this again. At the end of the Cold War, right, the Soviet Union collapses in ninety one. It, it it it's it's gone, and there's an understanding that well, there's no more need for NATO expansion because the whole premise, the whole reason uh, NATO exists, was to contain Russia. Right. That that's why they founded it in nineteen forty nine, and the Soviet Union is gone. So why would you need to keep you know having countries join NATO? Why do you need to keep expanding NATO, especially? you know, in Russia's direction. And so this is what's been happening, right? Look at the expansion from 1990 to, to 2022, right? It just keeps growing. So you, you have five countries now, five countries that are, on, uh, a NATO, that are NATO members and sitting on Russia's border. So Russia feels threatened. And I, I, I feel like this is so stupid that I have to explain this again. But can you imagine the reaction if, for example, Mexico or Canada joined a, a military alliance doesn't have to be russian but just if canada or mexico joined a military alliance that's adversarial or antagonistic to the united states what would the united states do it's not even a hypothetical thing i can just show you the cuban missile crisis right when cuba was partnered up with russia they had soviet missiles installed uh, 90 miles from the florida coast they lost their shit and it's so it's so egregious that you still learn about that in school right that's still that's still a thing it's a major event in the cold war because the United States borders were, were under threat. Yeah, well, what do, you, what do you think Russia feels like when you got <laughs> five NATO countries? You know, and they still want to add Ukraine. They still want to add Ukraine. So, you know, it's, it's just stupid that we have to explain this, but you'll never hear this point of view on, on Western mainstream media. They, they just won't touch this. I have never, ever, ever uh, read an article. I've never seen anything where they actually address this point that Russia has concerned. Right? They only paint this like, well, you know, Russia... Uh, annexed Crimea and Russia is building up troop numbers on Ukraine's border. Yeah, but it's also Russia's border. It's not, <laughs> you know, there, there are, there's a, an intention to add uh, Ukraine to NATO. And so Russia's deterrent is to have troops on the border in, in a, you know, in a, in a defensive capacity, not an offensive capacity. It's not trying to invade Ukraine. It's trying to defend itself. But of course, you cannot you cannot give this point of view because then you you change the dynamic, right? It becomes oh, well, Russia's the one that's actually defending itself, and we are the aggressors, and that doesn't work. That doesn't fly. And it's just fucking incredible, like how the lengths that they go to. It's really hysteria. I don't I don't know what other word to describe this kind of shit. Uh, that you know, every second it's oh my god, Russia's going to invade. Why are you doing this? What what is this this uh, insanity? It's really it's you know it, it's hysteria. That that's the correct word for it. That every single second, Blinken or Liz Truss or the Washington Post or whoever the fuck else is coming out with these like these absurd, these these astronomical lies. Uh, and again, my favorite was the one with um, uh, saying that you know, uh, I mean, this this individual is really special. You know, <laughs> Putin has big weekend plans. Jesus Christ, weekend plans. I mean, the ratio on that is incredible. Honestly, the ratio on that is incredible. And I love the response afterwards. It's not like. It's emotions are running high, not I'm full of shit and I'm a fucking warmonger. No, my emotions are running high. No, that's not your emotions. You got something else going on here. And I can't, I can't help but draw parallels with Iraq because you, got, you guys need to understand something, what's happening here. I don't know how old you guys are, but I'm just old enough to remember Iraq and 9-11 and in this whole period. And so that was really like every fucking day they had something new, right? The, the anthrax letters. Saddam Hussein was sending these letters with anthrax inside them to members of Congress, right? And they, they, they tried to nail Saddam with that and say like, oh, well, it has this signature uh, uh, compound that's in the chemical formula and only Saddam has ever made anthrax with that chemical and then it turns out it's some fucking white guy in the United States who was doing it. God knows what relation to the, uh, to the deep state, but certainly not Saddam Hussein, right? So that's, that's one giant pile of crap that they tried doing. And then, of course, they had this thing with Saddam has links to Al-Qaeda, you know, even though Saddam is leading a Ba'athist secular government uh, and Al-Qaeda are right-wing religious extremists. So I, mean, I don't know how those two are compatible in any fashion, but again, a complete steaming pile of crap. So they tried to link him to Al-Qaeda and then they were saying, right, and so that, that's the, putting it in context with the war on terror, right? And then they tried saying he, he's not just linked to Al-Qaeda, he's sending them nukes he's gonna send them weapons of mass destruction and then he's building his own weapons of mass destruction you know he's failed to disarm uh even though the un said otherwise right i had scott ritter on the program who's who's literally in charge of making sure that saddam disarmed and he i mean who who better to ask jesus christ 
Uh, so they were saying that Saddam failed to disarm and he's building these, the, he has such advanced capabilities that in 45 minutes he can launch an attack. He has these mobile trucks that can like cook, you know, it's like Breaking Bad. They can just drive a fucking truck and cook up some bubonic plague in the back in 45 minutes. It's like the most insane crap. And this is real, right? And so every single day they would report this in the New York Times, you know, Judith Miller, just, you know, the, the, the scum of the earth. The, these people would report this every single day, like it's fact. Right, zero scrutiny, and it's what the same thing what you're seeing here. So when they when they report this stuff, um, that's coming from the government. Keep in mind, this is the U.S. government saying this. The U.S. intelligence agencies, the same people, the same apparatus that that lied about Iraq. They don't scrutinize it; they just report it as if it's a fact. And so this is when you stop being a journalist and you become a mouthpiece. You're you're just basically you're you're mouthpiece. You're you're uh, speaking for the government. Uh, and this is, I mean, by definition, state media, by definition. And so when you're no longer scrutinizing these, these astronomical claims and just repeating them as if they're facts, and in, in some cases, I mean, just making, well, not some cases, but I mean, in many cases, you, you have the, the, the pundits, the commentators themselves just making up, li literally just making up on social media, the most insane shit. Uh, I mean, what are you supposed to think about this? So uh, many people are drawing parallels between this and the Iraq war. Are they are they just as bad? I don't know. I, I, I still think, obviously, you know, Iraq actually happened. Um, I don't think we you, you could ever really know how bad Iraq was because it's there's so much cover ups, mass graves. It's it's so, it, you know, Iraq is still under occupation. It's a whole other rabbit hole, but uh, it's an entirely different rabbit hole. But uh if we're talking about the the lead up, the build up, so ju just before, yeah, there there are a lot of parallels. But it, but then again, that's that's it's always the case. That that's always what happens. Um, you can look at the thing with Syria with this this uh, uh, chemical attack in, in Duma in 2014. I mean, they just you know they they didn't even wait for any investigation. They just bombed it, and and I knew that was bullshit back then. Um, you know it. it of course, of course, they're going to use that every time the rebels are losing. They come up with this 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 lie and then use that as a pretext. It's always it's always this uh, imminent threat, right? It's it's the, the 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 Bush doctrine that we have to attack them before they attack us. We have to attack them before they commit some grave onslaught, and and it's manufactured. It's completely completely manufactured, um, to the point that uh, France, right, uh, and Germany, uh, Schultz and. Macron have both met with Putin, and they're not on board with this hysteria, right? Germany refused to send weapons to Ukraine. Um, and you, you can see how there's sort of a split within NATO that these countries are trying a more diplomatic approach. You know, of course, you still have Blinken speaking with Lavrov on the phone, but, you know, uh, they put down the phone and then go back to propaganda mode, so it's not really uh, much better. If you go on Twitter and you look at Blinken's feed, it's every, every six hours, like clockwork. It's like, oh, well, I... You know, Russia needs to um, de-escalate, and we express our unwavering support for Ukraine. And again, uh, it's propaganda mode 24-7, and there's no scrutiny from the media. Like, I, I haven't seen an actual headline in a major outlet that says, or not, not just a headline, like a piece, an article, or a video report, a segment, that actually challenges any of this. It's just, yeah, of course Russia's going to invade Ukraine. Here's why. Like, why? I don't understand why they don't challenge any of this. There, there's no one challenging this in the mainstream media. It's just accepted as fact and so on. And this is, this is propaganda. This is propaganda, plain and simple. Um, again, my favorite, just, you know, the, the date, February 16th. Well, it's, it's definitely past February 16th, and I can tell you there's been no invasion. So, uh, you know, that's it. And here, of course, with the sun, they even had the time. <laughs> 1 a.m. I mean, you know, again, even the headlines are the same, right? Oh, Russia's going to invade in a few days. Saddam can deploy in 45 minutes. It's the same crap. And so, no, there, there has been no invasion, and they're full of it. And even the, the other stories that they came up with that are so detailed, right? Like, oh, they're hacking this building, the Russians, and they're bringing blood bags to the front, which means that war is imminent. You know, it's, it's, it's like these extremely detailed propaganda pieces that again remind me of the build-up to iraq where they say like they didn't just say saddam has nuclear weapons they would say things like well you know he sent people to niger to get yellow cake uh which is uh you know which you need to build a bomb so they had these like very detailed lies which are just completely manufactured just completely bull complete pile of crap made up by the cia you know um I 
it's unreal, man. I, I get so sick of it. I'm really sick of it. And no one learns from this. Like, people should be looking at this and, and going like, well, where's the invasion? You promised us in a war. <laughs> and it's not happening. Maybe, maybe you guys are full of shit. And we should stop listening to you. But no. People are, are too conditioned, right? Russia, Russia, Russia. And so on. 